Coming up on Hoosier Sports Night. Track and Field hosted the Gladstein Invitational this past weekend right here in Bloomington. And as baseball season nears, our Joe Brennan is in the studio with the latest on the IU roster. This is Hoosier Sports Night. Hello and welcome to Hoosier Sports Night. I'm Hank Joseph. And I'm William Stewart. Hank, how does it feel coming into your last semester here at Indiana? You know, well, I really wish you didn't bring that up mm -hmm. right here, right now. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Hank. I really am. It's okay. You just enjoy your three and a half years. I will. Left. Absolutely. After winning back-to-back -back games against Wisconsin and Illinois, Mike Woodson's squad returned home for a matchup against Michigan State. Our Evan Kamiko has more from Assembly Hall. So long, Sparty. Behind 31 points and 15 boards from Trace Jackson Davis, Indiana gets back to 500 in the Big Ten, defeating Michigan State 82 to 69. There's not a person in the country that can honestly guard me, so um, it is what it is when we hit shots and everything's clicking. We're a great team and we're tough to beat. I think you're looking at a complete player, man, that's for four years that has done it at a high level. He's a beautiful player to watch. I'm just glad he's on our ball club. Put it that way. But it wasn't just TJD who had a big day. Both Tamar Bates and Trey Galloway added 17 points while running the Hoosier offense. Running that second unit this fall really helped me out um, and to get me ready for the season. I mean, it was it was really hard going against Jalen and um, Xavier. Getting that experience in practice uh, really helped out and um, showed the day. It's all about trust. Tomorrow, you know, he had been struggling the last few games, and and he stepped up and played tonight. And Gallo's been solid. He plays hard. He does all the intangible things, things that guys don't like to do. 11 days ago, following a loss against Penn State, many fans and experts thought this Indiana team was dead in the water. Flash forward, following three big wins against Illinois, Wisconsin, and now Michigan State, there is life once again here at Simon Scott Assembly Hall. I just think that we finally got um, acclimated to uh, the new the new unit that we had in, and um, honestly, we're just um, we're just playing for each other. Just sticking to our habits, controlling what we can control. Um, I feel like if we do what we do best, I mean, we'll live with the results. The Hoosiers have found their groove and will be on the road Wednesday against Minnesota. From Assembly Hall, Evan Camico, IUS TV Sports. Last night, without head coach Mike Woodson on the bench due to COVID. The Hoosiers were on the road against a struggling Minnesota team. The Hoosiers picked up their fourth win in a row and will now return home on Saturday to face off against the Ohio State Buckeyes. The Indiana women's basketball team was looking to continue momentum after dominating Illinois in Champaign. Playing on the road in the Big Ten is no easy task, especially against number 13 Michigan. However, Mackenzie Holmes and Sarah Scalia made it look easy. Holmes ended the night with 25 points and Scalia recorded a season high 19. The Hoosiers took the victory 92 to 83 and earned themselves their best start in program history at 18 and one. Looking ahead to tomorrow night, the Hoosiers host the number two ranked Ohio State Buckeyes with the number one spot in the Big Ten on the line. The last time these two teams met was back in March in the Big Ten tournament. Indiana won that game 70 to 62. The Buckeyes are coming off their first loss of the season, and head coach Terry Morin spoke about how dangerous they will be heading into Assembly Hall. You know, trust me, it happens. You know, it's contagious. When you win, it kind of snowballs, and you just keep winning, and um, everybody feels very confident. And so um, and this is a very dangerous team, and especially dangerous coming off of a loss at home, you know, to an Iowa team. Tip-off is at 8.30 in Assembly Hall. After a great start to the season at the Commodore Challenge, the Indiana track and field team returned for the first home meet of the season at the Gladstein Invitational. IUS TV sports reporter Joe Cronin has more. So far, the Hoosiers have been in sync after a strong performance at the Gladstein Invitational. However, head coach Ron Helmer argues that there's room for improvement. Coach Mathia, our sprint coach, he would probably tell you he's incredibly frustrated because we had five or six kids that were dinged up and didn't line up. Um, we had other people that ran one event instead of the two or three that we wanted to run. 
Even with some of the discontent that Coach Hemler had on this meet, it's important to note some of the standout Hoosiers. Parker Raymond returned for his first meet in which he was crowned champion in the 600 meter event. Janet Barker set a new PR and is now placed in third in the Big Ten Conference in the 800 meter event. Fellow Hoosier Antonio Laidler won a first place not once, twice, but three separate times in the 60, 200, and 4x400 meter events. And, and yet we, we've got people like Antonio Laidler, uh, Traley Banks, guys like that who just keep, keep giving us effort and keep lining up. One Hoosier in particular that's soaring to new heights is pole vaulter Nathan Stone, and there's no telling just how high he can fly. You know, I like to think that I'm always push, like fighting as hard as I can to get as high as I can. That's, I, I usually full send every single time. Some of Stone's accomplishments this season have been remarkable. He's a three-time champion in all three meets that he's been a part of. He's currently first in the Big Ten Conference with a height of 5.4 meters on his highest pole vault. There's a 555, 560, 565 vault in him, I believe, and, and with all great athletes, you get to that point where, where you're ready to do it. Tyler Carell, fellow Hoosier pole vaulter, placed second at the Gladstone Invitational, and some of the co competitive nature between Stone and Carell has driven Stone to new heights. He's always right there sniffing him, growling at my back, so I always know there's somebody there uh, ready, to, ready to hock me down if I don't perform. The Big Ten better watch out, because I think one, two, three, four, it's going to look good. Camaraderie is going to have to be the name of the game for the Hoosiers, as their next event is the IU Relays starting on January 27th. For IUS TV Sports, I'm Joe Cronin. The team will compete in their second straight home meet tomorrow at the IU Relays. After winning back-to-back -back matches against ranked teams, Indiana Wrestling faced another tough squad in the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Adam Oppenheim has the latest from Wilkinson Hall. Last Friday, Indiana Wrestling took on the 11th ranked Minnesota Golden Gophers. Unfortunately for the Hoosiers, it was not their night. They lost by a score of 28-6. However, there were some positives, including heavyweight Jacob Bullock, who came up with a clutch win to finish off the dual meet and Henry Porter, the freshman, who was able to get a last-second takedown to secure an early victory for the Hoosiers. Stay in good position, really stay calm. A lot of people get out of their head, they get worried it's closer than they want, but you just got to continue to breathe, uh, stay in your stance is the biggest thing, don't get out of position, and just stay focused on what you're trained to do and then execute. Indiana had chances to win multiple matches, but it was the little things that pushed the Golden Gophers over the edge. The dual meet was not a lot closer than the score, um, but to end on a good note with the win, I mean, that's always great. You know, you can have a dual meet like that where it doesn't go your way, but then that last match kind of savors it, you know, and it makes you feel better about it. Um, thought we lost a lot of close ones, but, you know, it's, uh, they're ranked 11th in the country. And, you know, for us to close that gap to get into the top, we got to win those matches. Indiana looks to bounce back next Sunday as they travel to West Lafayette to take on the Boilermakers. The Hoosiers have a chance to get back in the win column as they travel to West Lafayette to take on Purdue on Sunday. Follow along with Adam Oppenheim and Griffin Healy for updates. Coming up after the break, we crown this week's Hoosier Highlight Athlete of the Week. And the latest on IU tennis, water polo, and baseball. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Hoosier Sports Night. Joining us in the studio for the Hoosier Highlight Athlete of the Week is IUS TV sports reporter Sam Brunsman. Sam? Thanks, Hank and William. Our Hoosier Highlight Athlete of the Week is Indiana men's basketball tr star Trace Jackson Davis. The senior forward out of Greenwood, Indiana, has been dominant for the Hoosiers this year. Jackson Davis collected a quartet of national accolades this last week, including the Naismith Trophy Player of the Week and Big Ten Player of the Week. In the two games against Illinois-Michigan State last week, Jackson Davis averaged 33 points, 12 rebounds, 
and four and half assist and f with four blocks. In the last 25 seasons, he is the only Division I men's basketball player to rack up at least 65 points, 20 rebounds, eight assists, and nine block shots in a two-game stretch. Jackson Davis looks to continue his dominant play as the Hoosiers take on Ohio State this weekend here in Assembly Hall. That is all for Hoosier Highlight this week. William, back to you. Thanks, Sam. The Indiana swim and dive teams headed up to West Lafayette for one, final, one of their final meets before the Big Ten Championships. For over a decade, the men's and women's teams have defeated Purdue, and this weekend they defended their streak by dominating them in their own pool. The Hoosiers swept the podium across the board with Quinn Henniger and Carson Tyler winning the one meter as well as the platform diving events. In the water, the Hoosiers swept the podium in the second heat of the individual medley with seniors Brennan Burns and Mike Cavillo finishing less than half a second apart. The Hoosiers continue to show how versatile they are with swimmer Mackenzie Luz winning the 100 breasts and the 400 free. The Hoosiers are fired up for their final meet against Louisville this weekend. The Indiana women's water polo team traveled to sunny California this past weekend for the UCSB winter invite. They faced off against number 11 UC San Diego, number 19 UC Santa Barbara, and unranked CSU Fullerton. In the nail-biting game against UC San Diego, the score went back and forth until the Hoosiers were able to maintain their two-point lead for the remaining final quarter. Against UC Santa Barbara, the ladies put up a hard-fought fight and scored two goals at the end of the fourth quarter, but it wasn't enough to win. The Hoosiers were able to end on a high note by defeating CSU Fullerton by 14 goals. In that game, sophomore Sophia Solly and Grace Hathaway earned, a Hoos earned the Hoosiers a 2-0 lead, which they maintained by not allowing the Titans to score a single goal in the second half. The Hoosiers will compete in their first home game of the season this Saturday at 10.30 against Villanova for the Hoosier invite. And with baseball season under three weeks away, Indiana baseball's 2023 roster has been officially announced. Our IUS TV sports baseball reporter Joe Brennan joins us now with the rundown on Jeff Mercer's squad. Joe? Thanks, Hank. Baseball season is right around the corner and the Hoosiers are looking to bounce back after a somewhat disappointing season in 2022. Shortstop Philip Glasser enters this season as the most experienced Hoosier on the team. Glasser is coming off a career best 346 average with 65 hits and just 30 strikeouts, mostly coming from the leadoff spot. IU also returns last year's stellar group of freshmen. Matheson, Tibbetts, Pine, and Goforth all look to build off their All-American freshman campaign in year two. In terms of new talent through the portal, right-handed pitcher Gabe Levy looks to have an immediate impact for the Hoosiers on the mound. Levy was the primary closer for Davidson last season with 34 strikeouts in 32 innings. And finally, outfielder Devin Taylor was named preseason Big Ten Freshman Player of the Year by Perfect Game. With a mix of both young and veteran talent, the Hoosiers are hopeful to compete for a Big Ten title. William, back to you. Thanks, Joe. Last weekend, the Indiana men's tennis team traveled to Middle Tennessee State. Our men's tennis reporter Ben Polanski has the recap. This weekend, the Indiana men's tennis team traveled down to a hostile environment in Murphy Murfreesboro, Tennessee to face number 25 ranked Middle Tennessee State. They started off hot, but ultimately fell short. Yeah, they're a good team, and especially in this environment. They're one of the best, uh, one of the toughest places to play, honestly, probably in the country. Starting off with an exciting doubles match, it came down to Pat Fletcher and Ilya Tiraspolsky, where they won the doubles match, which gave the Hoosiers their first point. Um, yeah, I mean, we definitely played a lot better than we did last weekend together. Um, we made a lot more returns, first serves. Um, we used... Uh, our team backing us was awesome, so I think just like moving forward, we just got to keep putting some more returns in play, uh, keep the energy up, and uh, uh, yeah, keep the first serves in play, and uh, yeah, just keep going with the, the, mo the momentum that we just got from this match. On the singles court, the Hoosiers started off slow, but fought their way back, but in total fell short with a score of 4-1. to one. We were able to kind of match the intensity and pull, kind of compete back, but it was just a little bit late at a couple matches, and, and that was, you know, it's... I just think we got to be ready to go from, from the very first point. The Hoosiers are back at home next Sunday with a doubleheader where they face Ball State and Butler. From IUS TV, I'm Ben Polanski. To keep up with the latest on the Indiana men's tennis team, follow along with Ben Polanski, Kylie Corman, and Zeke Shapiro.
The Indiana women's tennis team looked to extend their hot start to the season when they faced Cincinnati this past Sunday. IUS TV sports reporter Sam Brunsman and Michael Livingston have more on the matchup. Indiana women's tennis faced off against the Cincinnati Bearcats, looking to keep their undefeated season alive. In the number two doubles, the Hoosiers started out strong with Mila Mayich and Lauren Lemons winning their match at 6-0. Coach Ramiro praised Mila and Lauren for their quick start. Mila and uh, Lauren have been playing really well and uh, you know one of the things that we wanted was to have that energy right from the start and uh, I think she, they did that and they just took it and it definitely helped the momentum of the for the other two teams to be able to get off the court that quickly and uh, how well they play we were really proud of them. The Hoosiers took the doubles point with a 6-4 victory in the number three slot with Alex Dykulescu and Rose Hu after they quickly fell behind 3-0 before rallying back. Wake Forest graduate transfer Sabi Nihalani rolled in the number two singles match, quickly defeating her opponent 6-1 and 7-6, winning the second set tiebreak 7-2. Sabi, after her win, explains how important it is to have teammates and fans cheering and rooting you on to victory. So even when, even when you're not playing super well, if you hear your teammate cheering you on and the crowd cheering you on, it motivates you to play better, it motivates you to fight for your school, and that's how it helps you to play better and fight so that eventually our team can win. The Hoosiers won the match 4-3 to three over the Bearcats. The Hoosiers will take on the West Virginia Mountaineers next Saturday here in Bloomington at 11 a.m. The last time these two teams faced off was in 2017 when the Hoosiers were victorious 4-3. to three. From the Bloomington Tennis Center, I'm Sam Brunsman, IUS TV Sports. The Hoosiers' final matchup of their homestand comes this Saturday at 11 a.m. against West Virginia. Follow along with Dylan Traeger, Michael Livingston, and Sam Brunsman throughout the season for more updates. There's one last thing before we go. IUS TV sports reporter Victoria Remrev joins us with this week's Candy Stripe calendar. Victoria? Thanks, guys. It's going to be another busy weekend in Hoosier sports. To kick off this jam-packed weekend, the women and men's swimming and diving teams will take on the Louisville Cardinals on Friday. After a very successful weekend for the Indiana track and field team at the Gladstein Invitational, the Hoosiers will lace back up to compete in the IU Relays in Bloomington on Friday and Saturday. Competitiveness at its finest, Saturday begins at home in the water, where the women's water polo team takes on the Villanova Wildcats in the Harvard Crimson. Later in the day, the women's tennis team will face off against West Virginia, coming off a win against Cincinnati. Saturday's action closes out with a huge matchup of Big Ten basketball. The Ohio State Buckeyes visit Assembly Hall in an important mid-season matchup between the two teams, trying to climb higher in the Big Ten standings. State bragging rights are on the line on Sunday, where the men's tennis team takes on Butler in Ball State. In honor of girls and women's in sports day, the number six ranked Indiana women's basketball team will face Rutgers here in Bloomington. Indiana's wrestling team continues to impress. They will grapple with our in-state rivals, the Purdue Boilermakers, in West Lafayette. That wraps up this week's Candy Stripe calendar. To stay up to date with this week's events, make sure to follow IOS TV Sports. Back to you at the desk. Thanks, Victoria. And that's our show for the week. Thank you so much for tuning in. And be sure to follow us on Instagram and Twitter at IOS TV Sports to keep up with all the latest in IU athletics. For our production crew behind us, I'm William Stewart. And I'm Hank Joseph. We'll see you next week.